Hello and let's talk about Rahul Tevatiya's innings in the IPL. The 27-year-old's whirlwind innings of 53 in 31 balls helped his team Rajasthan Royals chase a very tough target of 224 in the IPL match held yesterday against Kings XI Punjab. What was even more interesting was the fact that he struggled initially, taking 23 balls to hit his first 17 runs before unleashing five sixes in one over, a record held so far by Chris Gale. His heroics are now being celebrated, but during the first part of his innings, he was being massively trolled, with even commentators taking his case. Of course, once the turnaround happened, he was the man of the moment. These ups and downs in social media and by commentators are a sign of the times, maybe, how quickly and prematurely we respond to issues even before the time is right. Now, sports is one of the disciplines where we get to see this the most, but politics, entertainment, these fields are not immune either. We talked to NewsClick's Leslie Xavier on social media experts and the pitfalls of this culture. Thank you, Leslie, for joining us. So, yesterday's match was uh, quite a the word is what a whirlwind match for lack of better words. Lots of ups and downs, of course. And uh, Rahul Tewatiya's performance has been rightly praised. One of the interesting things is that how, which you were mentioning as well, is how commentary responses drastically shifted during the course of that very short innings. It wasn't even a very long innings or a test match for that matter. And so how do you see, could you just take us through the ups and downs and maybe uh, what it kind of says about fandom itself in today's sport, especially cricket? Uh, it's, it's actually not just the fans, it was also the experts who were giving commentary uh, live during the match. So, uh, Tevadio, of, of course, he was under pressure. He came after the skipper got out and uh, they were chasing a huge target against Kings, Kings 11 Punjab. And so, uh, he started off, I mean, he was nervous, visibly nervous. And even his captain Steve Smith, after the match, he said that we could see from the dugout that the only thing that is bothering him was his nervousness. Otherwise, they were all confident about his capabilities. And so he took 19 balls to, in fact, middle the ball that way. And that's a, I mean, that's considered a sin in T20 because uh, it's a 20 over match. And if you, I mean, use the best part of uh, 20 balls uh, for, for getting set, it, I mean, it's, it's considered a sin. But uh, also, cricket is a, a game which, which, which uh, has various styles of how a batsman carries. Himself through the inning, right? Faces himself through the inning. And yesterday's, I mean, not exactly a direct comparison here, but yesterday's innings was reminiscent of a, one Mr. MS Dhoni who made a career out of doing things like this, where he would face himself initially, get himself set, and then just explode when 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 it was uh, necessary and when he, he would close the match. He would, and we praise him as a great finisher. But then MS Dhoni's early part of his career compared to what we have now, uh, the nature of fans, nature of cricket following, nature of cricket commentary, nature of how fans engage through the match has changed. And that was evident yesterday when initially Tavadia was blasted, ripped apart in, on social media, on Twitter. Even the commentators joined the bandwagon. That is a recent phenomenon that I've been noticing where the commentators themselves, the experts, the former players, right. they themselves say things which which are capable of becoming viral. So some of them were commenting yesterday saying that maybe the Vatiya should throw his wicket because he is obviously having trouble batting. And so for the for the larger part of the team, maybe he should get, get himself out so that other people can come in and uh, play the match. And then the same commentators later in the match when he exploded and when he ensured that his side won, uh, they started praising him, saying that uh, that's a that's a brilliant turnaround. He he he, he played really well this latter half of his. Uh, uh, so the whole episode which played out yesterday, it's it's beyond that sports fandom and how sports fans behave. It's also indicative of how. Things are at present as far as social media, social media, media commentary, and everything is concerned. So we have a lot of experts on on social media, uh, experts who hardly understand what exactly is happening uh, on the playing field, right. in the society, on the political realm, in uh, any any matter for for that environment, 
any any matter you take everybody has an opinion and they find it safe and convenient to express that opinion opinion explicitly aggressively on social media and without even realizing what exactly they are talking about or whether they are right or wrong that right. that kind of accountability is 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 lacking on social media and uh, it's uh, so i I'm, i'm taking i've 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 taken back to younger days when our parents or our elders in the house or even our teachers they used to tell us that i um, mean what we speak or what we express is very important because we can't take it back so you right. always have to, and also the accountability that something that's been drilled into our system at a younger stage or in our formative years saying that we have to be accountable for our actions for what we say i mean before our actions obviously what we say because these are things that we can't take back this will affect our credibility in the long run this would hurt people this would i mean all these things are gone out of the window suddenly uh, and initially we thought that this is so we we used to have these kind of discussions where i mean we ourselves in the on the news click sports desk have been trolled many times by fans of different groups when we are critical about their team or their player uh, when we are critical about virat kohli a lot of uh, indian cricket fans come come down when we were cricket uh, recently critical about the isl and uh, a football club from calcutta their fans came in uh, so and so we initially used to talk about twitter being a nasty place suddenly and how uh, it's 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 not exactly a conducive environment for free thinking for free expression because people just join in and attack but then when we look at the larger picture it's it, it seems to have seeped into real life as well because accountability and uh, uh where the responsibly behaving or responsibly talking or responsibly ex- expressing our opinion with with credibility with with nuance is 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 lacking across the board everywhere so that is that is a, that is a com- that is a commentary that i would like to make observing what happened ex- uh, so many miles down in the on the west uh, in uh, in the middle east uh, in a cricket uh, on a cricket field right so in this context is interesting because uh, one of the aspects is also how uh, you've talked about this as well how this is seeped into media as well and we saw some of this in the controversy around sunil gavaskar's comments last week but also in many other areas where we see that the instant gratification slash virality model of social media is now influencing all social discussions around sports around social issues in general yeah so uh, sunil gavaskar is recently in the, in the sports field uh, before that if you look at it uh, i mean the most raging issue in the country at the moment is is sushant singh rajput's death and uh, riya chakrabarti's and generally bollywood's uh, usage of substances uh, of course there are a lot of other issues that is happening across the country but that hardly matters but this is viral and so uh it's a, it's a, a self serving nexus hmm. if you ask me so there are vested, vested interests in making something viral or making it not i mean not viral so we have had various reports uh, various uh, theories as well as reports on how the social media channels they they can push certain ideas ideologies or content uh, based on based on their business model or based based on based on the economics that they work on and uh, or their vested interests in general uh, and uh, that is one aspect of this the other aspect is the instant gratification that you uh, mentioned because everybody gets into the man bandwagon for two different reasons one would be to not to miss out on the traffic and the potential revenue that it has because it's all about ranking your website or your channel the prc is involved so it's it's a, it's a highly cut throat world over there so if some news gets viral somewhere the other news channels or other other websites would want to get into it and not miss out of it regardless of whether it's right or not the chain of command is uh, is uh, involved in it it's also i mean so it's it's in larger news rooms how it works is 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 very very tricky because the uh, at the lower rung where people are involved in 
publishing or involved in pushing these stories, the viral stories, the social media based stories, uh, they are expected to bring in the numbers. Uh, that, at the same time, editorial calls are not, not exactly their forte. So by the time these stories are out uh, and, and the numbers come in, then uh, even, even in the higher ranks where the editors sit or where, where the people who can take a call on whether this is editorial right or wrong, they just don't get involved in it because at a, at a larger scale, the purpose has been served. The, uh, the numbers are coming in. So that, that it, 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 it has a cascading effect and it's it just tied up in this kind of a spiral that it's, it's I don't know how the, uh, the media scape would come out of, of, of this, this whole setup. It's, it's going to be very difficult in that regard. And as far as topics are concerned, and as individuals, how we react to certain certain things. The classic example being last week's uh, Sunil Gavaskar issue. So there were many, and Gavaskar's greatness is beyond doubt in cricket history. And he mentioned something, which, I mean, as a, as a as an observer, I feel that he was referring to Virat Kohli's another viral video where he was playing cricket with. Anushka Sharma on the uh, on his uh, in his house premises, and uh, uh, Anushka was bowling to Virat and they were batting. I mean, he was batting. So uh, he just casually mentioned that it was probably. I mean, so where is the sense of humor that we are supposed to have? That is one question. The second question is on Twitter, on social media, across uh, people started going after Sunil Gavaskar saying that who are you questioning his credentials, questioning his uh, sense, his uh, sensibilities and also even physically threatening him also like we should break your face and all that and these people I don't know where they come from, what their background is in cricket or understanding of cricket or history is but you are talking to a person who used to play helmetless against the fastest bowlers in the world who used to come from West Indies at, at that point with no restrictions. They used to bounce you out. I mean, they don't need your wicket. They will just ensure that you are walking, I mean, you're stretched out of the field. And he used to play, and he has scored double centuries facing these kinds of bowlers without an helmet. So, and and you're talking about breaking his face. So, it's, it's I mean, the absurdity of, of such statements, uh, statements that you see online just makes us wonder where what we have become as as a society as as uh, in this at this point in time and right? at, right. at this point in history and is there a going back from here that's also another question because our lives are and more so during lockdown now our lives are completely intrinsically entrenched in online systems we ourselves mm -hmm. are talking via zoom and uh, uh, our this video would come out on on igtv on youtube channel it would be pushed via social media so it's 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 a reality that the online space and the real life space is is more or less one now. So it's it's about time that we as a society and uh, take a stand saying that we should have some kind of uh, all those unwritten guidelines that we used to live by earlier. That what what I mentioned earlier about. Right. Speak right. Speak, think before before speaking. All these things should apply now on. Uh, online and the social media behavior because it's 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 our life now. It's and that's and our life individually means that it will affect the entire society as well. So that's that's the that's the problem that uh, these instances and yeah, IPL. It's entertainment. It's a cricket match. It's uh, this boy, he uh, 27 year old journeyman. He has made a mark now. He is he is probably will have a great season. He would probably. This would open doors to a larger, much more better career. Everything is great. And we are talking about game as such. And we also talk that as professional athletes, these guys should now learn to cope with such pressure, such criticism and all that. Maybe he does too, because the first thing that he said was that those 20 balls were the worst balls of my career. Right. That's, not a, that's not confidence, if you ask me. That's not how he should have addressed that. Uh, he should have said, if you ask me. But he is also probably scared of what the repercussions would be when he says that I don't care the, about the 20 balls. Look, I scored and I made the team win. But that, I mean, you never know how how these social media warriors would would take that and come after Absolutely. him. So Absolutely. that's 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 the reality for you. Right, right. And in that way, on the one hand, a lot where when say the social media era began, 
one of the promises was of course that common people would have the ability to participate in various ways in all these aspects in sport and politics that was considered one of the promise promises of social media per se and there have been examples of that happening also in good ways where uh, in whether it be popular culture whether it be sport social uh, social media presence and social media fandom is helped but what you said is very accurate in the sense that uh, we're talking about a sports person who was successful yesterday but suppose he had failed the yeah. amount the avalanche of criticism that would have come his way would put could have put his career back considerably even he is a technically skilled player of course but for all you know it could have been disastrous for his career uh, so yeah uh, these things affect uh, individuals you know because uh, whatever is spoken and uh, i mean expressed on social media and uh, people who throw these words they probably won't realize it and uh, i mean i could speak from my experience when i was trolled once for a story and uh, and this was a relentless attack probably a concerted attack by a, by two three fan groups of 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 mohan bagan club uh because i was critical of the club and one of their frivolous actions and uh, they just uh, i mean 6 7 hours i i mean i reacted a little probably i shouldn't have and 6 uh, 7 hours of continuous thing and then it started affecting me it's because you it just brings you down you have when it raises your blood pressure perhaps and you just keep constantly dragged into it so much so that your work gets affected through the day you Uh, so this is just me and we are not superstars we are just journalists common people and we are not governed by social media uh, personas or we don't we don't even care what what these strangers think about but but when you are a sports star when you are a celebrity when you are when you are in the public sphere these things these things matter because uh, a public persona and public how you carry yourself outside it's very much important and part of this as a sports person's career and so when if at all uh, tabati had failed yesterday i failed to see his team team to yesterday the the storm on social media would would have been so much that probably the team management whatever their internal planning and dynamic for this boy is through this season they might have uh, been forced to rethink their strategy that's the power that that social media and right. and these these uh, channels they have on 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 how things 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 work on on the playing field so or, or on the sports field and this this is sports we are talking about uh, the same thing applies to politics the same thing. i mean you know how uh, the ruling disposition controls media controls social media the the famed or or infamous it cell uh, which which pushes content pushes pushes ideas through so this uh, i mean it's it's I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm catching my head too. I mean, it's uh, I, I don't know where this where, where this is gonna lead. It's it's an evol- evolving process. So when you mentioned that when the social media entire system started, entire ecosystem started, the the, uh, the latter part of last decade, and uh, the promise was, of course, uh, I mean, world getting smaller, mm-hmm. you you getting in touch with people, getting to understand what other people are doing. and then uh, i i feel that gradually down the road so twitter when we got into twitter initially everybody says looks back uh, the initial twitter writers they look back saying that it was such a happy place so much of interaction so much of uh, positive interaction so much of exchange of ideas uh, then slowly news happened but that so that was also fine you get news through twitter uh, and then suddenly things changed i don't know whether i mean i you can't directly i mean it's it's a mix of a lot of factors you can't directly correlate it by saying that of course that is also a factor a big factor capitalism happened in on social media uh, it's a, it's a big factor because uh, money started getting into it uh, so these guys realized for instance facebook realized that they could make money by ensuring some content is pushed and some content is not so that happened and on the other side, other side freedom and liberty we talk about right and there is this uh, i mean uh, one of the basic i mean the founding tenets of uh, liberty is that it should be uh, exercised with uh, with uh, 
uh, responsibility. Right. So that was, I mean, that those kind of rules are missing on social media. It's it, 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 it's like a wild world out there. So this is an evolutionary process for sure because everywhere society, whenever or civilizations, whenever it has been formed, these kind of evolutionary things have happened on in the in the real world, and historically when we look back at it. And now in history, the real world is, is virtual that way. It's a mix of everything. And maybe it will take some years for it to uh, clear itself and get those ideas right. Maybe it might take generations as well. And but the, the way things are things are progressing, it is it is gonna take a huge turmoil first, and then then right. everything would clear. Right. I guess that I, I guess in history that we are heading towards that kind of, I mean, I don't know whether I'm going ahead uh, a little and and calling it, but I think it would be a revolution. It, it needs a revolution for things to things to be reined in and settled in. And, Absolutely. Uh, and we get our bearings right. Right, right, right. Thank you so much, Leslie, for talking to us. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from the country and the world. Until then, keep watching News Click. Thank <laughs> you.